Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a cubic equation. And I'll be presenting two methods and we're going to be looking at the result from Wolfram Alpha as well. But I phrased the problem a little differently uh, to prompt Wolfram Alpha, I guess you could do it either way. Anyways, we have z cubed equals 2z minus 3i and we're going to be solving for z. How do you solve for z with the first method? Yeah. And if you set the cubic formula, you got it. So let's go ahead and put the 2z on the left and isolate the constant. And as you know, if I take a plus b cubed and then from that subtract 3ab times a plus b, I'm basically expanding it using the binomial theorem, right? Pascal's triangle, the coefficients are 1, 3, 3, 1 and subtracting the two terms in the middle, ending up with the first and the last terms, which is a cubed and b cubed. Make sense? This identity is what we use to solve cubic equations. So let's go ahead and call this z now. And we got our equation, z cubed minus 3abz equals a cubed plus b cubed. And if you compare these two equations, you can realize that the coefficient of z is negative 2 or negative 3ab which means negative 3ab is the same as negative 2 which implies 3ab equals 2 which implies ab equals 2 thirds so that's one of the equations we're going to use and the other one comes from the constant a cubed plus b cubed equals negative 3i all right cool cool now from here hopefully we can find a and b can't we that kind of looks like a cubic equation but it's not it's actually a quadratic. So the idea is to reduce the degree. When you're trying to solve a quartic, usually try to reduce and find the cubic. I believe it's called the resolvent cubic for that equation. And there's a formula uh, that you can come up. I think Lagrange worked on it. Anyways, let's go ahead and solve the system by substitution. We can do a couple different things like cube both sides and then plug it in. But I'm going to do it a little differently. Uh, isolate b and write it as 2 over 3a. And here, if you substitute a cubed plus 2 over 3a cubed equals negative 3i, you're going to get a cubed plus 8 over 27a cubed equals negative 3i. Now, at this point, it will be helpful if you could just uh, substitute something for a cubed, which is like c c plus 8 over 27c equals negative 3i make a common denominator 27c squared plus 8 and then multiply by that you're going to get negative 81 c i okay this is quadratic I, I should probably write it as i c because hopefully you see what i see all right uh, because uh, c is the variable right so let's go ahead and put it here and we get our quadratic right obviously there's a formula that you can come up with or you know formulas exist anyways but i like this more um, helpful informative uh, so let's solve this cubic using the formula i mean the quadratic i meant negative b plus minus the square root of b squared that's going to be 81 i squared and 81 i squared is going to be negative 81 squared Okay, the opposite of that, minus 4 times 27 times 8. Okay, a lot of numbers. And notice that that is going to be a negative quantity. So its square root is going to contain i. Therefore, we're going to end up with a multiple of i. And now we're going to, I'll tell you what to do next, okay? Uh, this is going to be a little painful because it's the first method. But let's go ahead and try to simplify this a little bit. Negative 81 squared minus 4 times 27 times 8. I could probably just write this as negative 27 times 27 squared times 3 squared because 27 times 3 is 81. Minus 4 times 27 times 8. And I'll probably take out one of these 27s so that our calculations are going to be a tiny bit easier. Maybe I can pull out a negative 27. And then inside I'm going to get... 27 squared times 3 squared. It's still large. By the way, I think I messed up because I wasn't supposed to... Okay, let's see. This should be a 27. Single 27 because we already took out one of them. And yes, 27 squared times 3 squared. Now it checks. 
And now inside we have 27 times 9, which is better. And that would be 243, which is, I think, 3 to the fifth power. And then here I'm going to have a 32. See, it's much better. This is going to be 211. Now, here's the thing. Um, is 211 prime? Possibly. So, but the idea is you're going to get a multiple of i from here. Okay, so let's call this ki. K is a real number, right? And then uh, you're going to do substitute. How? Notice that a cubed is equal to c, but it could also be b cubed. So a cubed equals c. And let's say we used ki. From here, we're basically going to be cube rooting this number. And b is going to be the uh, other cube root, so on and so forth. And again, this is going to be really painful. That's why we're going to switch over the second method. OK, the second method is much nicer. And it actually involves the following. Oh, by the way, I have a third idea, but maybe I'll share with you if I don't forget. So with the second method, I'm going to try to find a possible root to this, maybe using the rational root theorem. So let's go ahead and put everything on the same side. This is how I prompted Wolfram Alpha. Like, can you factor this? And it gave me the factors. You'll see them towards the end. But here I'm thinking, um, I know i is not a rational number, but I can still use this idea. Could i or negative i or 3i or negative 3i be a solution? Obviously, i is easier to check. i cubed minus 2i plus 3i. i cubed is negative i, negative i minus 2i plus 3i, negative 3i, and this becomes 0. Awesome. So z equals i is a solution. So I can kind of manipulate this as follows. How? I can take this z cubed and then just add 1 to it not one to it. Actually, I could add i to it. Yes, that's what I'm going to do. And then separated one of the i's and then that gave me 2i at the end. Makes sense? I split up the 3i into i plus 2i. And you're going to realize this is helpful because I'm going to write the plus i as minus i cube. And then this will be factorable. You see that? Obviously, our goal is to get a factor of z minus i using difference of two cubes iz plus i squared and then minus 2 times z minus i and now z minus i is a common factor and then you can write obviously this is negative 1 z squared plus iz minus 1 minus 2 is going to be minus 3 awesome and from here you're not only finding one solution which is z equals i but also the other ones z equals negative b plus minus the square root of b squared which is negative 1 minus plus 4ac, which is 12, and that's going to be actually the square root of 11, which is real. So z is going to be square root of 11 with a plus minus sign, minus i over 2. And of course, z equals i is another solution. So this gives you all the solutions of this cubic equation. Okay, here's the third idea. Let me just share with you real quick, and then hopefully you can put it to practice. Now, I'm thinking since c is a complex number, why can't we replace, and the name of this channel too, right? Is a plus bi, that gives me a plus bi cubed equals 2 times a plus bi minus 3i. And try to set up two equations and find, solve for a and b and see if you can find it. And let me know what happens. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.